In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to pan and zoom when you have a multi-track scene. A subscriber said, I have a multi-track scene. On track number one is a still image. On track number two is a video clip that I've been able to green screen. So how can I pan and zoom on both of them together? I went looking for solutions to this and came up with two possibilities that I'd like to put there for your consideration in this tutorial. So we're going to take our still image of the room and drag it and drop it on track number one. And then I'll take my clip, this fellow in front of a green screen, and drop it on track number two. And then we'll make the two tracks the same length. So now I'm going to get into my PIP designer. For track number two, I'll double click on my green screen footage. And then we'll move down until we get to the chroma key area. I'll activate chroma key, use the eyedropper by clicking on it, and click anywhere in the green, and that should disappear. And we'll click on OK. So now I have the gentleman standing and moving in front of the room. And this is a pretty good shot. So let's go ahead and see how we can pan and zoom here using keyframes. So what I'm going to do is go to the track of the room. Let's assume we want to zoom in on the room. I'll double click on the track, which gets me back into the PIP designer for track number one. And then we'll, we'll set a position and scale keyframe at the beginning. I'll move the playhead to the left side. I see the red line. I'll click on the diamond for position and scale. And then I want to go in, let's go in maybe uh, nine seconds, and I'll set those keyframes again. But now what I'm going to do, do is zoom in. So I will zoom out here in my preview screen, and then that will give me plenty of room to drag the corners in and zoom in on that segment right there. So now as I play the clip, I have the man in the same place, but then the room tends to change. Now it looks like he's backing up a little bit because the room's getting larger. How do I zoom in on him as well? Well, I'm going to repeat the process. I will double click on the image of the uh, man who is in green screen and I'll do the same thing. I'll take the timeline indicator, move it to the left, do position and scale, move in exactly the same amount of time. I'll go in nine seconds and then I'll repeat the process. I will zoom out here and then we will simply zoom in. Now, how much we do this is going to vary. I'll click on OK. Now let's see what this looks like. We'll go back to the beginning and we'll play our movie. So we're zooming in on the room and moving a little bit to the side and we're zooming in on the guy. Now here again we have a little bit of a problem with the distortion around the edge because of green screen, but it's not too bad overall. Another thing you can do to make sure that you have it exact in both cases is I'm going to go back and look at my room zoom. I'll double click on the room still image, go into the PIP designer. And then I'll move my value here on my keyframe to the second. And here I have a scale of 2.185. Okay, I'm going to change that to 2. And since my height and width are supposed to be the same proportions here, because I'm maintaining aspect ratio, that is set to 2. And I'll click on OK. Now I'm going to go to my clip of the man and get into the pip designer for that again. 
and now that was 2.341. So if I want the zoom factor to be the same, what I'm going to do is go ahead to that second set of keyframes and set that to 2.0 and it will duplicate it for width and height and click on OK. Now you might not notice the difference, it may be too subtle, but right now if I play the movie again, what should happen is the zoom factor on the man should be identical to the zoom factor on the room. Let me show you a second approach that is actually quicker and may in many cases be superior. I've cleared the timeline of all the items. We're going to take the still image of the room and drag that back into track one and we'll take the the clip of the man and drag it into track two. We'll make them identical length. We'll go back into track two and we'll chroma key the green. Click on the eyedropper and make it disappear. And now what we're going to do is just click on OK. And now we have the man in front of the background with no motion except for the motion of the man in the foreground. Then what I'm going to do is move to the end of the project and I'll produce a range here. So I'm going to take my playhead and click on one of the orange quadrants to either side of the white timeline drag across, then I'll right click and click on Produce Range. That will take me to my Produce section. I'll go ahead and make a clip of this these 23 seconds and we'll pause the video while we do that. Now that I'm back on my editing screen, what I'm going to do is we'll pause this here. I'm going to take my video, my produced video, I'll drag it down on this track. I could open it in a completely different project if I wanted to. And if I go ahead and play it, I have the man in front in motion and I have my still background. Then I can go ahead and highlight that clip, look on the Tools menu and choose Power Tools. In my version of PowerDirector I have a crop and zoom and so we'll go ahead give us some room and click on the crop and zoom button. And so I could start it out with full screen and that will set a keyframe. Then I'll move over into the project. Let's go nine seconds into the project, roughly. I'll set another keyframe by clicking at the bottom. And this time we'll just play and zoom in on the man and the background as one. And I'll click on OK. And so now if we go ahead and preview uh, what we have on the screen, we have the new project, which was both layers combined. And then we zoom in this way after it's been combined. And so that's a second way to accomplish the same kind of task. Mm -hmm.